All right, I want to thank everybody for um, attending this webinar today. My name is Frank Gilbert. It's about time um, for us to get started. So um, my plan for the next 20 minutes or so is to run through some of the um, basic interface and features of Dino Cloud just to get you guys up and running. Um, and then we'll also have some time for Q&A um, as, we, as we go through the session as well as at the end um, of the presentation. So just a reminder, this call is being recorded, so you'll be able to have a copy of the recording once the webinar is finished. And as we go along, please feel free to use the chat bubble. It should be located along a green bar at the top of your screen to chat in any questions you may have. That being said, let's go ahead and get started. So um, for those of you that are new or haven't used it yet, Dino is a web-based um, application. Um, so in order to access it, you do need to contact your help desk or local IT person to get the link for the teacher portal. Um, that'll definitely be a requirement for you to use Dino. Once you have that link and you navigate to it in your browser of choice, your login information, um, you, your username is your full email address. Again, your username is your full email address. And then there is a forgot password link um, just below the password box that you'll use to set up your password for the first time. Um, so again, you'll, you want to access the teacher portal through a web link that you need to get from um, your IT help desk. Username is your full email address and use forgot password to set your password up for the first time. <coughs> Once you get signed in, you're going to see a list of your classes. Now for 95%, 98% I guess of our schools, um, they're syncing up with um, the student information system. So Skyward, um, PowerSchool, Moodle, Blackboard, um, all those systems are syncing with Dino. So we're pulling your classes from that system. So if it looks like you don't see your classes correctly, um, definitely contact your IT help desk so they can um, reach out to the student information systems people and figure out um, what's going on and, and we can resync with that data once it's updated. So um, definitely reach out if your classes, your class rosters don't look correct. Okay. So from this screen, it's pretty obvious. In order to get started with Dino, you need to click start monitoring for the class that you're teaching. I'm going to do that in a second, but before I get there, I just want to talk about some of the main features from this screen. Below start monitoring, there's a couple links. The first is edit. The link to the left is edit. Okay, clicking this lets you come in here and change the name of your class. So if you don't like the way it's being synced out of your student information system, you can change the way it looks in Dino by changing the name. This is also where you set up your co-teachers. Okay, so if you're co-teaching, uh, team teaching, you got a sub coming in, you've got, um, the, if you want the principal or a library tech or somebody to be able to, to monitor alongside of you at the same time, you do that by setting up a co-teacher. Setting up a code teacher is easy. You click on add the, the add teacher button. You type in the name of the teacher. Once the name appears, you go ahead and just click on the name and that's gonna load them in as a co as a co teacher. Okay. We had a question. Um, you can only have one co teacher at a time, which means two total teachers of the class at the same time. Um, but we definitely have an enhancement and some research in there for um, more than two or more than one co-teacher, I should say. Um, so thanks for asking that. Um, at this point, it is only one co-teacher at a time. Okay. Um, so if you don't, when you when you don't need a co-teacher anymore, you can um, remove the teacher from your class by clicking the red X and confirming. And then now you're just the primary teacher of the class again. You'll notice on this screen also um, there is a section for managing students, just like you do the co-teacher. Um, we do not recommend doing this. Again, 98% um, of our customers are syncing rosters with their student information system. So if you come in here and try and manually change things here, it's a really good sh chance that the next day um, everything's going to be reverted back. So the proper way to manage students is to reach out to your help desk or the registrar and make sure those changes are made in your student information system so Dino can sync up properly. So. Um, the only time you would um, you would really um, use this is, would be for um, for some custom classes. Okay. All right. Um, 
the other link here um, below start monitoring is view analytics. So a lot of you probably know that um, when you start monitoring, Dyno does record um, the information, the websites the students are going to, the applications that the students are using. Dyno is recording all that once you click the start monitoring button. Okay? All of that information is then accessible through this view analytics button. And you can see here what it looks like. Okay? Um, so I'm getting a classroom view of all my students. There's a drop down here where you can change that to individual students, okay? And um, there's also a drop down here um, for date range. So if you want to change the um, dates of what, when you're seeing the data, you can do so for, the la for today, the last seven days, the last month, since the start of class, or any custom range. So if you just want to see what they're doing two weeks ago, um, you can do that, okay? Lots of power and information here just by clicking on Start Monitoring. You can let Dino do the work of capturing what the students are doing. You don't have to try and catch them in class. You can focus on teaching your content, and then you can review this afterwards. All of this data is also printable. Okay, there's a print button here. I know as a parent, when I go to a parent-teacher conference, I like to know what my kid's doing in class. And that doesn't have to be a negative thing. That's a positive and a negative sometimes. So there could be really cool, interesting websites that the students are taken to, that are going to, that are very educational. Um, that could be fun to see. So um, sharing this information doesn't necessarily always have to be um, about, you know, catching students in the act of doing something they're not supposed to. So that print button will allow you to do that, and you can take it to the office or to parent-teacher conferences or what have you. I'm going to go back to my list of classes here. Okay. The last thing then on this um, view that is important to note is going to be the ability to combine classes. So there are lots of times where um, you might have inclusion classes or honors or special needs classes. Um, these are separate in your student information system for grading purposes. So when Dino syncs, they show up as two separate classes, kind of like I have here. Um, but you meet with them at the same time every day, and this, all the students are with you. So it doesn't. So what you need to do is combine them into one, so you can monitor all at the same time. You can do that by clicking Combine Classes here in the upper right. Okay. When I click Combine Classes, okay, it gives me the option to um, enter a class name. So whatever I want the name of the class to be. Find class, and then I just check the box for the class rosters that I want to combine into one. When I'm ready, I click Save. Now, keep in mind, you're going to get this pop-up. This is a permanent combination. So you only want to do this for those classes that you meet with every day of the semester together as one. You don't want to just randomly combine your math class with your English class or something like that um, if they're not supposed to be combined. This is a permanent combination and can't be uncombined. So um, just be aware of that. All right, so let's get into the meat and bones of Dino then. I'm going to go ahead and click Start Monitoring. And when you start monitoring, okay, what you're going to see is Dino is going to pop up and it's going to load thumbnails of your student screen and it's going to load an activity tracker on the right-hand side. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on these. I'm just going to hit the high points. But the thumbnails update every 60 seconds. Okay, we don't want to crash networks, but you can refresh them from this refresh circle, or you can hover over um, a student thumbnail and click a refresh button there. Also under the student thumbnail is the blue Big View box. So you can click on the Big View, and what it's going to do is it's going to launch a more detailed view of that student's device. So if you really want to see what types of cookies the student's looking at, um, you can dive right in. Now I'm getting hungry. Okay. I also like to use this for a presentation tool because I don't have to take time for students to come to the front of the room, connect up to the projector, and try and adjust graphic settings. I can pull up a student's thumbnail, project it from, from the big view, and then I can click the X and I can go to my next student and go to the big view. The next student go to the big view, and it saves me a bunch of time in class. Okay. This activity tracker over here on the right, that's the real-time view of what students are doing. 
okay? So um, unlike the thumbnails that are adjusting every 60 seconds, this is real time, and this is also what's being recorded, okay? So you've got that, as long as you click that start monitoring, this activity tracker is recording student activity. Now, we still want to be able to keep the students focused in class. That's where this modify blocking button comes in. Modify blocking is what lets you set up these classroom rules. So I'm going to click modify blocking, okay, and show you a couple of examples of um, how these are set up. Anytime you create a blocking plan, it is saved. You can reuse it and reinforce it in any class, but you do have to apply it in each class. It does not stick between classes. You have to come in here and reapply it each class. Um, I'll click on the drop down here, and I've got um, a blocking plan here. You've got two choices allow only and block only. We really emphasize choosing the allow only plan, okay? Because with allow only, you don't have to guess what your students are doing, okay? You put in where you want the students to go, and everything else gets blocked. So in this example, I'm wanting them to go to Google Chrome, Chromebook schools. It's very, very important. They can't use the device if you're not letting them use Google Chrome. So always make sure that's in the application. And then for websites, I just type in the domain of the website, abci.com, apexlearning.com. If I want to put it a new one, I just type it in, national, and it's already in my list. Okay, so there's nationalgeographic.com. Um, if it's a website that's new that you've never used before, you'll just click Add Website once you've finished typing it in. Note, I did not put in the www or anything after the .com. I don't need that. Dino Access is a screen reader. Okay, whatever. As long as this portion is up here in the URL bar somewhere, um, the website's going to work. Applications is the same way. If I want to allow Word, I can just type in the application and I can put it in my list, okay? Block only again, it's the same way, except you're choosing what you want to block on the student's machines. It's a lot more guesswork, but it has its advantages sometimes. Say you're in a math class, you don't want them to use calculator or something like that. Um, so it does have its advantages, okay? Blocking plans are applied to the entire class unless you come up here and click on turn on segmented blocking, okay? Segmented blocking lets you differentiate um, groups of students between one of two blocking plans. So in this case, I've got my first plan, the allow only, um, and this is where they can go. And then the second plan, you know, maybe that's something they finish taking the test so they can um, have a little more freedom. But in this case, I did use a block only. They can go anywhere they want, but I don't want them using social media here. Okay. So I've got that. I've got that ability here, okay? Um, in order to move students between groups, all I have to do is check the box for their name. Okay, when I'm ready to apply this, I just click Enforce. Okay, and now I've got every student here is in my first group, nothing's in my second group yet, but I can quickly switch between them just by hovering over the thumbnail and clicking the green switch icon. Okay, so I can switch them back and forth as I need be. Another very beneficial feature, probably one of um, my other favorites, is the um, attention bell. It's over here by the activity tracker. Okay, This attention bell lets you send messages and open web pages on student devices. Okay, so it's very handy to get students' attention and to save you some time in class. The way it works is you click on send a message. You choose your message. Dino has a couple built in for you, um, but if you don't want to use one of these as a quick, you know, attention getter, you can click custom message and type in your message. Please review the following for tomorrow. Something like that. Okay, you type in your message. If you want to put a web page in there, you know, maybe I'm having them go to National Geographic. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it in to my chat window. Okay. Or not chat window, but the, the, the word box here. Okay. Um, so with this in here, um, that's going to la potentially launch the web page. 
I say potentially because the next choice decides what's going to happen. And that's whether you want to lock the device or not. Okay. So right now I'm locking the device. And what happens when you lock the device <coughs> is it's just going to blank the student screen and it's going to display what you see here as text. It's not going to launch the page. The student can't click on a link. They can't do anything with it. It's just going to launch and be a blank page, um, a black page with this text. If I choose device lock, no, this is when it gets a little more interactive, okay? So with device lock, no, <clears throat> it's just going to pop up a box in the upper right-hand corner of the uh, student's window. They can read the message. They can click on the link. But it also launches the link automatically, so that's important. You know, if you want these students to be at a web page, you just copy and paste it in here, device lock, no, and then you select your students, and you click send. And that's going to launch the web page as well as the message. One other thing with the device lock being yes, um, if you don't want to have to remember to unlock the student's devices, you can put a timed release in there. So we have some intervals. All right. So I select those and I click send. And now that's going to launch um, that web page and display that message on all the student devices. Couple other features here, um, just above the attention bell, we do have our questions. Okay, this is a polling feature. I'll emphasize it's for polling and feedback. It is not for quizzing or testing. We do not store the results or review the results later. It is a just-in-time feature that you can ask a question to students and as they respond, you can review the, the results and use those results to help determine um, how to proceed with your teaching. The way it works is you click ask a question, Okay. Um, I'll just pop up an example here, but as you can see, I can send a question as it is, review and edit an existing question, or create a new one. Okay. Um, when you're creating a new one or editing one, you just type in what you need here, the, the question or the statement. Choose if it's multiple choice, true, false, or yes, no. Type in your answer choices. You can mark if one's correct, so you get a quick glance of seeing who got it correct. And then you click send. Okay. Clicking send as the students um, as the students respond, what's going to happen? Okay, is along the right hand side, the answer choices are going to pop up here. Okay, so in this case, I got two students that in my class that answered correct and two that got it wrong. That immediately tells me 50% of my class doesn't understand the content that's going on, and I can react to that accordingly. It is anonymous. Um, at, by default, we want to have students answering truthfully, but if you need some more details, you can click on one of the responses and see who answered that. And finally, just above that is the check for understanding box. Um, this is pretty similar. It's not a specific question. It's just a request where students can respond, I get it, I'm not sure, I don't get it yet, and those responses come back to you as a donut chart. So I'll click request here, and you see I've got a gray donut chart, but as the students respond, um, things are going to populate in here. Okay, so I got a couple students that say I get it, and two that one's I'm not sure, one I don't get it yet. How how familiar is that? We had two students with the poll that got it right, and two that got it wrong. So um, maybe those are lining up. Now students can voluntarily submit their status at any time as well. Chromebooks have a dino swoosh icon up to the right of the URL bar, and then PCs and Mac have that dino swoosh both in the taskbar and the applications menu bar. Um, so they can respond at any time voluntarily as well. And with that, you have your overview of um, Dino Cloud. So you're signing into a web page with your email and setting up the password, editing your class as you see fit with um, a class name and co-teachers, combining classes if you need to. As soon as you start up Dino, it's recording analytics, and you can start looking at thumbnails, keeping students focused through the modify blocking and attention, and getting students feedback through questions and um, the student understanding. Last thing I'm going to point out here, I'm going to end my class, okay. Um, again, this session is recorded, so you can um, review it at any time. But we also have a support button here in the upper right. 
okay? Um, and there's, um, this takes you to your teacher resources KB, which has um, short videos as well as step-by-step -step handout guides. So um, I wanna thank everybody for attending our webinar today. We do have another one coming up on the 14th, also at noon. Um, so if you had somebody that couldn't attend um, this one, please feel free to extend that invite to them so they can join up on that one. So thanks, thanks a lot and have a great day.